right, get ready for this one. It's a good one. We put out a video, painting your pools, things you should know. I do believe we talk about the danger of a pool popping out of the ground. So here is an enlightening comment. Dude, you know nothing about pools. I live in Florida and we are a professional pool company. And that's why the hydrostatic pressure is released. You need to educate yourself about pools, my friend. So what would your response be to the one size fits all and the hydrostatic pressure relief valve in the main drain A is there, B is working properly. C hasn't had a plug put in it like some of the great pool guys have done in yeah. the past. Yeah, so what would you say to someone that makes that comment? Now well, I would make that comment that Florida is a very different environment, and here's why. Florida tends to be no more than five foot deep pools. Uh, they tend to be really small compared to anything built here, certainly. And one hydrostatic valve, if working properly in the bottom of a really small pool, absolutely no problem. You're absolutely right. However, when you take a pool that's anything bigger than a bathtub, Meaning and, like and, what and we're talking 20 feet by 40 feet, 800 square foot pool, and you put it in a wet environment and you have a hydrostatic valve in it, the hope is that as you drain it, that hydrostat pops open. So his comment that I lack education, oh no, I've drilled plenty of holes through pools to relieve pressure that there wasn't enough pressure being relieved from a hydrostatic valve, especially if it's not a current customer that you don't even know if there is a hydrostat valve or if somewhere along the way somebody didn't plug it because mysteriously that I've seen that many many times that people have well the hydrostat keeps getting stuck open or popping open so they take it out and they throw a rubber plug in the bottom that system now is gone so professional or not we've seen plenty of people do all kinds of stupid stuff including a homeowner doing that so you make an assumption that you're just going to go ahead and drain this pool is, is really a wrong decision to make and hope that the hydrostat valve is going to be enough. In our case, when we leave a pool empty, I'm going to tell you when you've got a bigger structure, not only do you have a hydrostat that you're hoping is open, but as that pool is emptied, especially if it's going to be op uh, emptied for any period of time, left empty, we drill holes through that shell as we go down to relieve hydrostatic pressure. So yes, I agree with him in a really small, teeny tiny scale, little bitty backyard pools typically not a problem but we rarely service a pool that's 12 by 24 or 14 by 28 rarely rarely even something as small as 16 by 32 which on an average pool in florida that's mm -hmm. a big pool mm -hmm. we're talking a whole lot of different scales so you have to scale your mind up in terms of is that going to be enough because here's the other thing this is something we we don't talk about how is the pool built how much gravel was put underneath? How, how many times have I seen over the years, you run out to a construction site and you'll see somebody threw a, you know, a half a yard of gravel under the shallow end of the pool and a little bit under the main drain of the pool. That's not enough in sand and coral environment. It might be enough, but I'm gonna tell you here where we're dealing with heavy clay, it's not enough. You shoot gunite directly against, against clay and that seals it off from one end to the other. Now you might have gravel here and not over there you need complete flow of water to be able to find its way down to the main drain. So there's a lot more to this than simply making a blank, blanket statement that, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, dude. Oh, dude. Um, although, dude, so say that I do have a gunite pool and I would like to drain it, either I'm the homeowner or I'm a pool professional. How can I, before I start the job, verify that I have a hydrostat valve that will work like it should. Well, you can't, you really can't. You can dive down to the bottom of the pool, pull the main drain off, look and say, yep, there's a hydrostat valve there. So here's what a hydrostat valve is. It's a penetration through the pool and depending on who built it, what's underneath. So they make, that Hayward used to make when it was sort of a tapered fitting that had slits in it, kind of was a, like an oversized, um, oversized finger in a filter. And what that would do is that would, you would screw that to the bottom of the main drain in the pool, and then you'd put a bunch of gravel around it. And so if water ran down there, it pushed through that main drain, through those little slits and came up and then popped the valve open. 
and that little valve has a it pops open there's a, a o-ring on there and there's a spring so that then when the pressure relieves boom it shuts again so this this valve like you're showing that it's it's like what two inches uh, in uh, diameter i would say 80 percent of them are probably inch and a half but yes up to two inches okay so so in addition to my question about verifying that it works if i have a gunite pool and it has you know say conservatively thirty thousand gallons of water um in the event that I have a, a clay situation or I have groundwater in the ground because in Michigan we often have like standing water next to pools, um, you're telling me that this little two inch plastic piece is going to remedy the water yes, situation? That's what I'm not telling you, but oh, that's what someone uh, else is telling you. Okay. Let's add to that. If you had, let's say it was two inches open underground and water could clearly flow up through it then that that two inch line is more than adequate to relieve the pressure Wait, on is the it pool. clean filtered water no or no this is groundwater this is this is groundwater could a underneath pebble ever get stuck always does leaves the, and stuff no? get stuck in there that's why mm -hmm. we get those panic calls by pools draining and you know at a, a foot an hour that's okay. because the hydrostat pops open debris gets caught in there it shuts and all of a sudden the water can run out it as fast as possible. Mm. This isn't the first rodeo so for that, me. I've been through that, that many, many times. A malfunctioning valve. A malfunctioning valve. Okay. In that case, if you're draining the pool, that's fine, that part, that's just a hydrostat. But what people fail to realize is what's underneath the pool is more important than that little valve that pops up and down. And here's why. Because if you use that Hayward one that has these little tiny slits in it, the volume of water that you can push up through it is fairly minimal. Uh, number one but how about all of the pool guys that make their own so the guys there they, they got to get this started they got to get the main drain in place so a guy takes a piece of pipe and he uses a hacksaw and he cuts a bunch of slits in it and he st shoves a duct tape in the end of it and he glues that up in the bottom of his main drain and he shoves it down into the stone and he runs his plumbing to it and they start shooting all over the place wait isn't this part inspected when this is not inspected there is built? not a single hydrostat valve in the world that's ever inspected so not only do you have a million possibilities of how someone did it uh there's some right ways and there's some wrong ways and i would bet that 50 percent of the ways that 50 percent of the time they're not done to an adequate level so just by saying there's a hydrostat valve there's no fail safe that that is going to work usually will it work yes but the one time it doesn't massive problems do you want that to be on your job or would you rather to be someone else so yes you can control water yes you could we've seen people put full drainage systems underneath pools we've seen every possible way of trying to control that water but i'll tell you what water built the grand canyon have you ever been to the grand canyon yeah uh it's pretty magnificent it's and pretty incredible large. to think water did that that was flat plain at one time and and now you have this massive erosion water pushing a pool out of ground that's like child's play for water it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal when we're trying to pay for it or we're trying to fix it or we're trying to do something, but water has no claim to, oh, this is gonna be expensive. I'm not gonna do this to you. Yeah. And then you add all the human elements, all the times that people leave, the pop hole in the bottom is too big or too small, or they don't plug that properly, or there's, there's a million scenarios that we could talk about. And you never, ever, ever trust, ever, that that hydrostat valve is enough. Okay. You hope it is. If you built a pool and you're confident, if this is a client base of yours, like for me, the pools that we've we built and we've serviced for all the years, I'm pretty freaking confident what I can do with that pool. Mm -hmm. But the pool next door or the one next door, or the one next door or the, the 500 other pools in the neighborhood, I have no guarantee. Uh, and that's the same challenge with emptying a fiberglass pool is one of them is gonna be certainly fine and they're gonna have put a put a sump down there that you could put a pump in it and it's never gonna run and it's gonna stay dry, but the guy next door put a sump in but his is water all the time. You empty that pool, you run the risk of it popping. Well, also if that valve gets stuck open a little, even a little bit for a trickle and they have an autofill on, like we had one customer, uh, the calcium on the underside of the valve clearly showed that it had been leaking Water for quite some been time. running through that? Like, do mm -hmm. the manufacturers guarantee that these will work? So here's the funny thing. There's no guarantee on any of that. Yeah. But if you look at a hydrostat valve, it is 17 cents worth of plastic, a three cent spring, 
and a five cent O-ring put together, sold in a little bag for seven bucks. You're counting on that $7 piece to take care of your many hundred thousand dollar potential pool. Yeah, that, dude, and, and yet that's yes, what we do, dude, that's what we do. Yeah. And so, and, and that's half the equation. The other equation is how the under be underneath that. You know how many times I pulled a hydrogen valve and, and found leaves and gunk in there? Why would there ever be leaves down there? That's supposed to be virgin ground underneath with stone and, and, and there's sticks that come out of them and all kinds of stuff. Because at that point, I can't see what's underneath. I put, can pull debris and sticks out and stuff and go, what's under there? Maybe there's a big hole under there. You don't even know. It's this big around. You can't see that far down and see what's going on. Yeah. So there's this is a not a one size fits all kind of thing. And there is a lot of scenarios. And there's a lot of really idiot guys and gals out there building stuff yeah. over the past or years. servicing them thinking they know Or servicing all. them know, and yeah. how many times have we been called out to pools that have popped out of the ground and for any number. We've yeah. seen all of that. So we have, we have like, plenty of evidence of all of that. People. So it is not imaginary. Even These if, are real scenarios. Even that if happen. there are people that will tell you it's imaginary. It's not. Um, I've stood next to pools that have popped out of the ground. Mm -hmm. It is not imaginary. Mm -hmm. And it's a massive undertaking once it happens. Yeah. So, Although, you know, anyway. thank you for this really um, really amazing comment that we were able to have this dialogue about to hopefully uh, prevent others from finding themselves in this situation. Yeah, don't make assumptions. Yeah, there we go. <laughs>